Hello my beautiful creatives and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B and I'm a creativity coach hoping to inspire you to live a more creative life every day. Now this is my mini 4x4 weekly canvas series. This is canvas number four that we'll be doing today. Um, I have a couple of items that I'm using on every canvas so let me show you what those are really quick. Um, every canvas has been starting with some book pages adhered with some gel medium. So I am using a French play today to do for my book pages. Um, I also use, uh, the colors I select are all from my uh, golden sample um, tubes that I don't use terribly often, but I decided that this project, I will use them every week. So I will choose some of those. And I will also use a crystal, the crystal gel and I will use a punchinella to put that on using a palette knife. So basically a crystal gel through a punchinella using a palette knife. So those rules still apply for today. The only other thing that I am keeping in mind is that each canvas has a um, inspirational word that I have pre-stamped out using letter stamps and a permanent ink pad. Um, all of the words that I've selected for all 10 of my canvases are all words that for me relate to meditating and feelings and words that I want to remember as I'm meditating. So today we'll just go ahead and use the next one, which is release. And without further ado, let's just get started. And we'll start with me pulling some of my papers, my book pages. This is a pretty small canvas, so I'll probably just do two today. And I want to um, tear all the edges off of this paper because I like my paper to have raw edges. I want to do this today. I do this differently every week, um, but without thinking about it too much, I'm just going to tear my piece, my piece of paper up into random sizes um, and then just to tear them down using my Golden's Matte Medium. Okay, so let's just get some matte medium down. Now, if you've been watching my channel and watching me do these canvases, you'll know that I like my papers to overhang the edges so that I can wrap them around the outside edge. You'll also notice that I like to do my um, text right side up, upside down, uh, and all different directions. Oops, big glob right down the side. Let's see if we can catch that. I don't usually worry about making a mess, but I mean, I don't worry about any messes that might be made. But let's not make too big of a mess, shall we? And just kind of keep putting them down until you get it to where you like it. So now that I've gotten all those kind of down, I'm just going to kind of smooth it out real quick and then I'm going to adhere all of the edges down. Okay, I've gotten that layer dry. So now we are ready for the paint layer. I love the paint layer. The paint layer is fun. I don't have any of my other canvases in front of me, which is a good thing. That's something I did on purpose today. I don't want what I did on my other canvas to influence the can this particular canvas. I want them all to look similar, but I think they will look similar because I'm choosing from the same set of colors and I'm using the crystal gel and then the words are all formatted the same way. So I'm hoping that that will cause it to look similar. I want to use Cronacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Now I've been using this on every canvas. I love it. I'll probably use the green gold. Let's see. It was a gold, green gold. Teal was fun. We could use a yellow today. Hands a yellow light. I don't know. Why not? And then 
the teal. We'll probably also use the white, not the titanium white, but we'll use that later. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to start, just like I've been starting, I'm going to put some color down and I'm going to start with the lightest color, which is the Hansa Yellow Light. And like always, I don't really have a plan. I just want to get some color down on my little canvas, not forgetting to put it down the sides as well. Like so. Nice and messy and juicy and fun. It's a very happy color. I like this color. It's not one I would normally choose, but. Let's see. Now let's grab, grab a baby wipe so I have a way to keep my fingers clean. I don't mind my fingers getting dirty. I mean, that's part of being a mixed media artist. But I want the colors to mix on my canvas and not, and not on my finger before it hits the canvas. So I'm going to come back in with some teal, knowing that the teal and the yellow may mix together, which is fine. And just kind of put two drops down. And I feel like the size of those drops were huge. Whew. So I'm going to smoosh them both so they don't run anywhere. Try to get them to blend a little bit. And keep some areas that are true blue. Run along the ends. Okay, like so. Feels a little bit like Golden Girls at the moment, 1980s something. Decor, you know, Florida chic. Is that just me? Am I the only one seeing that? Maybe. Okay, so let that kind of sit there. I want to take a baby, uh, baby wipe and a stencil and pick up some of that color. So let me just pick a stencil real quick. I have to work kind of quickly because it won't work if the paint has dried. So I'm just going to use this honeycomb stencil from Tim Holtz. And let's see if I can grab some of that. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Pick up some of that color. I think that'll work pretty well, I think. Yeah. So let's line it up again to make sure that pattern goes all the way across. Whoops. Carefully. There we go. Just kind of take that off there. Yeah, I love that. Okay, I'm going to take a break for a quick minute. I'm going to dry this, clean off my stencil, and I'll be right back. Now that that is all dried, I kind of love it just the way it is, and I don't want to change it. I just want to stick the release on and call it good. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I really do want this to go with the other um, canvases, which are a little bit deeper and darker. So I'm going to save some of this honeycomb, which I love, 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 love but I want to do more. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of my green gold out and put that out where I can use it. And I want to kind of just smear some on just to kind of see what happens. Now these colors that I choose now are pretty translucent. So you can see what's through them rather easily, I think, in my opinion. And I just hesitate because I don't want to get rid of all of that. And I definitely don't want to get rid of this. See, there's the blue and the green and the yellow, and they all kind of mix together. I love that. Just kind of smear that on a little bit. It kind of gives like a a richness to the color. One of the things I've been saying as I've been doing these um, canvases is I want this canvas to be really grungied up. I want it to look like it maybe came out of your favorite aunt's attic or something. And it's been sitting there for eons. And you want to 
that's the look I'm trying to mimic. It's kind of a grungy, dirty, but still cool. You know, still, I don't know. I love that style. I love that look. So I have uh, indigo to put down. Now indigo is really, really, really rich, meaning you need just a touch of color to make that indigo show up. So I try to be really careful with it because a little goes a very long way. I'm also gonna put out some of the quinacridone nickel azel gold, just because that also makes me happy. This one kind of adds a rust color to your, your piece. So, and again, I love it, so I don't wanna touch it, but I'm gonna, let's start with the blue. the indigo. I have a lot on my finger. Eh. Where do you go? You just you just do it. You just put it down and smear it around and know that it really blends out well if you let it. Kind of do something like that, I think. And not trying, trying not to go too overboard. But I like the different variations in the blue that, show, that are showing. Okay, I want to bring some of that up to this corner as well. Yeah. Let's kind of see if I can. Uh, Take a little bit of that off. And of course, Mr. Gardener is deciding to do gardening now. Because why why not? So that blue has mixed with some of that undercolor that was kind of still floating there, and so it's kind of turned a little bit into an olivey green. And I like that. Okay. Now let's go in with a quinacridone nickel azel gold washing my finger off here. And this is the rust color that kind of like, to me, this is what makes it look dirty. Like it's maybe been sitting someplace for a long time. I'm gonna go a little bit over this corner, but I don't wanna lose all of that because I think it's scrumptious and I don't wanna lose it. Do need to do something with the side though. Let's mix the two colors together. Now let's keep this going. Restraint is not my strong suit. I just know what I like and I like to go for it. Especially in my art journal world. Which this is. Because you know, anything that I do on my art journal is fair game here. All right. Now I like that there's a couple of light spots. I wish I probably would have kept a little light spot down here, but I do like that there's a few light spots that you can still see some of that um, stencil, the honeycomb stencil. Now I'm trying to decide what to do next. Because this is all winging it for real. This really is how it works in my world. I have some mini stencils that I want to see if I can find one. And I could always go with my standby like polka dots, but I don't want to. What would be really awesome is if I had the little mini honeycombs. That would be awesome. I don't think I do though, I don't remember having them. Okay, so I do have those little honeycombs. I didn't think I did, but I do. I've never used it before, obviously. It's still sitting there kind of gorgeously spartan. I'm gonna pour out some titanium white onto my little paper plate palette. I say pour out, meaning I'm gonna put a dot down. And I am going to very randomly put some on my finger and I'm just gonna kind of blend and rub and see if I can get some of that design to poke through. Okay, oops. Being careful not to damage my stencil. like that, and do a little bit more over here. I, 
because I don't want it to be a perfect um, stencil. I don't want to be perfect. I want it to be grungy. Grungy and kind of like, hmm, interesting. I need a little bit more white. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna flip it over. See if I can get some of my brayer to put some of that down. And no, it did not. There's just uh, because I'm not using really a lot of paint. I'm really scrubbing it back, and it just dries so quickly. Let's put out some more paint. I'm gonna do a little bit up here. Just a little, and then I'm gonna do some of this on the edges as well, because I want this design to go further down. I don't want it to look like the sides are an afterthought or that I forgot to do them. So let's just lift that up. And kinda do the same thing. Just kinda smudge it on. Kinda smudge hard, don't worry about you know hurting anything. Let's see, we'll put that about there on this one. Okay. And then a little bit up here for this one. Just to make it look like it was not forgotten. We don't need a lot, we just need a little. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop my stencil in some water so I can wash it later. I'm going to wash my hand off and I'm also going to dry this so it is permanent. It's not going to move anywhere. And I'll be okay, back. so now that the white is all dry and I love it, it's so scrumdiddlyumptious, it's so awesome. I'm going to take, I put a little bit more uh, Quidacro Nickel Azel Gold on my palette and also some Hansa Yellow and I want to just add some of that color back into this white. Not to all of it, but I want some of it to be a color versus stark white. So with not a lot of paint, just gonna pick some of that up and kind of lay it down. Do that in all three sections, like so. Going to, with my baby wipe that I always have on standby, just kind of wiping some of it up. So it's kind of in little grooves. And then I'm gonna take some of the Quinacrino Nickel Azel Gold, because I love that. I think this one's one of my favorite colors. I'm gonna have to get this in a big girl size because I love it. This one is a little too heavy handed. Let's try that one again. Because I've dried all the layers beneath it, I can then pick and choose how deep I want to lay down color on top of it without worrying about any of the colors underneath. Here we go. It's kind of blend, 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 blend. Now, I feel like we've got some gorgeous teal over here, but we don't really have any anywhere else. And this teal is very bright and it's very opaque. So I am gonna put just a touch. And before I touch it with my finger, I'm gonna get my finger wet with baby wipe just so that it's not straight blue, if that makes sense. So it's a little watery down, so I can spread it a little bit easier. Because I want some of that blue on top. Okay. Now let's come back to this little stenciled area. Kind of wipe some of that up. Okay, so I don't mind the blue sitting in the grooves, but I don't want the grooves, I don't want the blue to be the, the color. Just want to add some to the background a little bit more. Let's get some more of that nickel azo gold. Kind of lay that over. Let's see, put a little bit down here of the blue, the teal. Let's kind of run some along the edge. That makes me happy. Keep it nice and dry. Okay, how are we looking? How am I thinking? Do a little bit more of the quinacridone gold over here. So I like the blue, but the blue took some of the grunginess away. So let's put a little bit back on, but not so much to cover up the blue. 
And there we go. So now we are ready for the next part, which will be what? I don't know. Let's dry this. Uh, I'm going to hit this with a heat tool and I'll be right back. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black doodling pen because, because why not? Remember what I said, anything that you would do in your art journal is fair game on your art canvas. So I'm going to just doodle some scribbly marks around a couple of these honeycombs. Not really having too much of a plan, just kind of playing a little bit. I'm trying to keep my play in odd numbers. Because I'm not a barbarian, am I? Just kidding. <laughs> I don't know. It's not funny in my head. Anyways, just kind of doing some random scribblies. Keeping in mind that when I put the crystal gel on top of this, it will smear it. So I need to kind of like be mindful of that. Kind of feel like I want these to connect. I don't know why. Just do. And we'll do this one off the side. And let's do some down on the down here. So we don't look like we've forgotten. These are all connected. But we will do one here. looking more like diamonds than honeycomb, but I think you'll understand what I'm doing. Let's just do some sketchy, messy marks here. So there we have that. I also want to grab uh, my Signo Broad pen, which is my white pen, one of my faves, and do the same thing. And I'm probably doing the same honeycomb. I'm going to do them in all areas. Maybe not all, but just to put some of that lightness back into it again. Keeping it kind of messy. My signo seems to be like releasing a lot of ink today. I'm not sure. This is a new one. They're all a little different. Anyways, let's do a little bit down here. I kind of like the messiness on the edges. And then we just kind of, oops, do we not? Mark that one, let's mark it. And these ones down here, just kind of put some indications that we know that they're there. Now I'm gonna hit this with the heat tool again. And I need to decide where I want my release to go. I think that this feels like that is up. Okay, so that is dry. And I'm digging in my stash here for my stabilo, my black stabilo. I know it's in here. Can never find it. That's why I put it on a pencil extender. And I want to take this and I want to just um, basically make a frame around the top and then do a grungy base around the outside edge of the frame as well. And just activate that with some spit and finger. So that's how we roll here. Just kind of grunges that up a little bit more. Okay, do the same thing around the outside edge. I like to do this near the bottom. Let's do, just do it as we're going. So you can see what I'm doing. It dries pretty quickly because it doesn't get terribly wet. I just like the depth that this gives it, and plus it reinforces that you found this buried treasure in an attic, and there'll be these 10 canvases that were hidden in there for who knows how many years. Let 
And there we go. I love, 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 love that. Love it. Okay, now clean up my fingers a little bit because I'm about to handle my paper. But I'm going to put my little release on and I think I'm going to put it right about there. I don't know. Maybe. Let's, uh, let's trial it out. Maybe that's where it should live. I think that's where it lives. And I'm going to use some Aliens Fast Grab Tacky Glue to put this down because this is hard. Um, this is a very thick watercolor paper. And I know it will hold it in place really well. Now, I would normally do like a scribbly, and I'm going to just do my scribbly frame around uh, my word. Give it a little bit of a. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the heat tool real quick. Now I think we're ready for our crystal gel. I'm going to put my punchinella down. My idea is that the, punch and the crystal gel will come down and around here like that. So kind of get my stencil ready for that. And then this is what the crystal gel looks like. It's a thick paste with glitter in it, holographic glitter. Love it. This is the hologram version. Just gonna take a, I don't know what you call that, a blup. It's a measurement right there, see that? And I want to do this in one fell swoop because if I stroke this too many times, it will clean up my, it'll like smudge my black and my white because those pins are not permanent. So just take a deep breath. Let's put the crystal gel down and ready, steady, go. There we go. Yeah. Put my punch vanilla in water so I can wash that later. Clean off my palette. I'm going to clean up any excess gel that may have gotten onto the outside edge. I even have some on the release. I didn't plan that, but let's see if I can clean some of that up off of there. Do I like it there? I don't know. Does it bother me? Mm, a little bit. It bothers me because none of the others have it. So I'm just pushing that gel off of my word with the edge of my palette knife. And I think that does it. I think that pretty much cleaned that up. Just making doubly sure. Yeah. So that's what that looks like. This is the finished uh, 4x4 mini canvas for the week. I think it turned out pretty well. I'm actually quite impressed with it. I love the honeycomb design that we've kind of got integrated into the different layers. Um, I think that this, although is, um, I don't know, I just, I'm loving how they all are unique. They can stand alone. They can be little art pieces that stand alone by themselves, like little mini tiny four by four art canvases. I love that they're quick and easy to do. I love that it's like, pulling my brave girl panties up so that I can go do a big canvas and not be scared to do a big canvas. So yeah, I love that. Anyways, this is now ready to go sit with its sisters over in my uh, walk-in closet where I have a little altar set up and these are all there. Um, and yeah, so I hope that you enjoy this. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. I'm always happy to be of assistance in any way that I can. And don't forget to thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe, and don't forget to share with your friends if you feel so inclined to. My little channel really appreciates it. And I really appreciate you coming and visiting me and hanging out on my little channel and checking out what I'm doing over here. So thanks so much for watching and until next time, bye for now.